Welcome to another edition of Cal's Corner here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. My name is Cal Korf and I'm your host. Today is February 6th, 2018 and it is a Tuesday here. So, welcome again to another segment. Rob McConnell is the executive producer of the show and I'd like to thank everybody for the wonderful feedback you've been giving me ever since the show started running for the last couple of months here on X-Zone Broadcast Network. I appreciate your input. And I'm pleasantly surprised that the response has been overwhelm- overwhelmingly positive. I can't tell you how uh, wonderful that makes me feel as the person who's doing this show. And I also thank Rob for this opportunity. All right, let's talk about several things here. As usual, we cover everything from politics to the paranormal, which is a wide variety of subjects. I want to start by giving a shout out and just praising the National Football League Uh, Team Philadelphia Eagles for becoming world champions, beating the New England Patriots. As I posted on my Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash Cal, K-A-L, dot K-O-R-F-F. Again, facebook.com slash Cal, dot Corf. I was for the uh, Eagles. And the reason why is because I think that in sports, rather than have one team constantly winning championships. I like to mix it up a bit. I like to see teams that have never won a title before become champions, and now we have that scenario. And if Hollywood had made this into a movie and this wasn't a real event, it would be hard to believe. The idea that uh, a team goes all the way into the season, loses their star quarterback, brings in a backup who almost quit the uh, National Football League, and um, then he leads the uh, team to not only a championship, but actually just manhandles the uh, you know reigning champions and makes Brady look like an amateur. Uh, you you couldn't you couldn't have a better ending even if you made it up. And of course, what made it really super sweet is the fact that it was reality. I enjoyed watching the game. I was uh, around some people. Uh, there was one person in the group who uh, wanted New England to win. A uh, nice lady who was wearing a Tom, Tom Brady jersey. And the others wanted Philadelphia to win. There were some people uh, actually who were from Philadelphia. Uh, but um, it was just a fantastic game down to the minute. And uh, just God bless these athletes. And it was just just one of these great sporting events, one for the memories. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, like the previous Super Bowl, the next one will be just as exciting. All right, so once again, congratulations to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles for becoming world champions and beating the New England Patriots. Now let's uh, switch to a different subject here. We're going to talk about for a bit the release of the Steele memo that President Donald Trump uh, authorized to be declassified. And we're going to talk about it and explain what it really means, what the ramifications are of its release, and also talk uh, after we go through that, uh, the supposedly impending release by the Democrats of their so-called counter memo and what that could mean, even though it is yet to be released. And we don't know yet whether ultimately it will be, but it has been submitted for uh, release to the public. The decision, of course, is up to Donald Trump or whether he'll just punt that uh, issue to the FBI and play, you know, political hot potato with it. So let's start with the Nunes memo. Now, uh, when you look at the issue of the uh, release of the Steele dossier memo, now this was the uh, uh, dossier that was uh, paid for by the Democrats, specifically the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. They paid a lot of money. Uh, apparently millions of dollars, to find dirt on Donald Trump because, you know, the Democrats, they like to play fair in elections, right? It's like rigging their primaries against, uh, you know, Hillary's competitors like Bernie Sanders. We know what disgusting behavior that they got away with. They broke election laws, but of course nobody's holding them accountable and you can figure out why that is the case. So in the case of releasing the Steele dossier memo, the question boils down to one word, conspiracy, or the alternative spelling of conspiracy, conspiracy. And let me explain the difference. The word conspiracy means when more than one party colludes together 
to try to do something. It doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. doesn't mean it's necessarily good. It just means that people are working together. They're colluding. They're conspiring to do something. Okay? But there's another spelling of the word conspiracy. And this is when you have a capital C, capital O, capital N. And the rest of the word spiracy is in lower cases. And when it's a conspiracy, the key word is con. It is not a real conspiracy. OK, so we know that in politics, there are conspiracies all the time. There are accusations of conspiracies that are just nonsense. The assassination of JFK, for example, is a is a good example, a brilliant example of a conspiracy. There was no conspiracy to kill him. Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. Get over it, folks. When people claim there's all this hard evidence to prove that Kennedy was killed as a result of a conspiracy, it's really a conspiracy. It is a claim that is false. It is a con job. It is not true. So in the case of releasing the Steele dossier memo, and uh, this is the uh, report on it prepared by Representative Devin Nunes, is it a conspiracy or is it a conspiracy? Well, unfortunately, we don't know yet because while the Nunes memo has been released to the public, uh, the Democrats claim that it's biased, that it's not telling the full story. So what they've done is they've prepared their own version of the memo, which they've written based on looking at the same set of intelligence that Nunes claims he looked at. And they're saying that all these other nuances and all these other details disprove what Nunes has wrote, that Trump is essentially guilty. Now, we don't know yet because we haven't seen the Democrats' version of the memo. We have only Nunes' version. My view of this is that both of these documents need to be released because once they're released, the American people will have some transparency on the issue. They can compare the claims in both memos and ultimately decide the truth for themselves. In the meantime, I think one can say that, again, here we go again. Days after American President Donald Trump gave his State of the Union speech uh, to the nation and to the world, where 75 percent of Americans had approved, according to a poll of, uh, that was conducted of viewers by CBS News, 75 percent of the people who saw the speech liked it. OK, 80 percent of the people who viewed that speech believed that what Trump was saying, what he was trying to uh, achieve was a rallying cry to try to unify what is clearly the polarized and now divided states of America. You have predictably the la la left wing liberal media, Trump haters and Democrats. They're at it again back to Trump bashing and Trump hating. This time, this troika is attacking Trump and the Republicans for releasing the contents of a formerly classified memo whose allegations, if factually correct, constitute a crime by various officials. Now, this would again be the contents of the Nunes memo. Now, conversely, if the contents of this memo are not true, its author, Congressman Devin Nunes, who is the chairman of the United States House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, he should resign. If what he said is false, he should be drummed out of the government. Now let's expose why this document is important and why the bleeding drama queen reactions to its release are shameful, overblown, and inexcusable. Now let's start with the Nunes memo that was declassified by Trump. Here are its contents. I'm going to read them to you. It's important to understand what Nunes is saying. Now, again, this is quotes from the memo. This memorandum provides members an update on significant facts relating to the committee's ongoing investigation into the Department of Justice, DOJ, and Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and their use of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, during the 2016 presidential election cycle. Our findings, now Nunes means the committees, which are detailed below, one, raise concerns with the legitimacy and the legality of certain DOJ and FBI interactions with the FISA uh, court, and two, represent a troubling breakdown of legal processes established to protect the American people from abuses 
related to the FISA process. Now, I'm going to stop right there and let's talk about this point because it is important. The key word here is abuses. The reason that Nunes claims he went forward with his memo is because there were alleged abuses of the FISA process. Now, abuses are abuses. Whenever you see that word, it is a red flag. You should stop right there and take a look at that. In the case of the FISA process, there is no question beyond doubt that there have been abuses in the past during the Obama administration. There were also abuses during the George Bush administration as well. Whenever abuses do occur, you have to stop that. You have to fix the problem. And what happened is there was an inspector general uh, analysis and audit of the FISA abuses during the Obama administration. What happened is President Obama at that time ordered that uh, steps be taken to correct the abuses to prevent them from happening again. While at the same time, out of the other side of his mouth, he said, make sure that the capabilities of the government to spy on people and obtain data were not jeopardized. Now, again, that's rather a problematical way of trying to say you want to solve something. You want to retain the capability, but fly straight within the law. But yet the laws sometimes have to be broken to get that capability. It's like trying to have it both ways or trying to say, I'm a little bit pregnant. No such thing, but, you know, politicians. So there were supposedly some safeguards put in place. Nunes is saying that abuses are still continuing, and that's why he wrote his memo. Now, we'll be back uh, in a moment after the commercial break here, and then we'll continue with the issue of the release of this. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Gwilda Wiaka's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of the Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Wilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, this is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the X-Zone, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, X-Zone Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk.
Welcome back to segment two here on Cal's Corner radio show here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. My name is Cal Korf, and I'm your host, and the executive producer of the show is the one and only Rob McConnell. Now, we were talking in the first segment about abuses that take place in the FISA uh, process. Let me explain briefly what the FISA process is. The United States is forbidden by law, law enforcement is as a rule, to spy on Americans. Okay, You have entities like the CIA, the NSA. Their job is to spy on foreigners or uh, foreign operatives who might be doing their illegal activities in the United States. Russian spies, for example, are spied on by the FBI, CIA, NSA, and so on. So if the United States government believes that there is an American who is colluding with the foreign power or doing the bidding of, say, Russia's Vladimir Putin, they go to this uh, court. It's a classified court. They present their evidence and say, we need a warrant or we need the ability to spy on this guy. And the judge listens to the argument by law enforcement. And almost 100 percent of the time, almost without fail, the FISA judge agrees with the FBI's request as an example or the DOJ's request. That individual is subject to being spied on. A period of 90 days is granted. Then if they need more time, they come back to the judge, explain why they need to have this renewed. It continues, and uh, they're supposed to um, continue to supply evidence that they really need to continue to monitor the uh, person of interest. So according to Nunes, he says that the FBI and DOJ obtained one initial FISA warrant targeting Carter Page and three FISA renewals from the uh, FISA court. And then he says, as required, a FISA order on an American citizen must be renewed by the FISA court every 90 days, and each renewal requires a separate finding of probable cause. Now, Nunes is right when he says that, but there's a little caveat here. Let's say that a FISA judge says, okay, you can go spy on Carter Page. And let's say 90 days later, the FBI comes back and says, you know, we need a little more time because it took us six weeks to get the bugs in place or whatever methods we're going to use to spy on him. And he's going to have a meeting in, in uh, a month from now with this Russian. The court would probably say, okay, you can continue this and then come back to me after the next 90-day period. In other words, because the subject may not know they're being spied on or any other entity or that a warrant has been approved to survey that person, things don't always happen cleanly in 90-day increments. The reason there's a 90-day limit is part of this theoretical check and balance. Notice that the court isn't going to give you an unlimited time frame to spy on somebody. They're not going to say, okay, here's two years, come back to me two years from now and see what happens. 90 days is supposed to be enough time to say, look, we either need to continue or we need to stop this because there's nothing there. So it turns out that um, after he says here that uh, each renewable uh, requires a separate finding of probable cause, that then director James Comey – now this would be the James Comey who was fired by Donald Trump shortly after he became president – he signed three FISA applications in question on behalf of the FBI, and Deputy Director Andrew McCabe signed one. Then uh, Sally Yates signed one. She was the uh, acting, uh, as well as acting DAG Dana Buente, and the uh, Deputy Attorney General, again that's DAG, Rod Rosenstein, each signed one or more FISA applications on behalf of the DOJ. Now, this is interesting that these individuals are involved because they're some of the key players, of course, uh, who have played major roles in the uh, recent uh, investigation by former FBI director, who was Comey's predecessor, Bob Mueller, who, of course, is uh, investigating the issue of Russian collusion uh, purportedly that happened between R the Russians and uh, the Trump campaign. So Nunes goes on to say that due to the sensitive nature of foreign intelligence activity, FISA submissions, including renewals, before the FISA court are classified. Well, he's right on that. 
Then he says, as such, the public's confidence in the integrity of the FISA process depends on the court's ability to hold the government to the highest standard, particularly as it relates to surveillance of American citizens. Now, again, Nunes is right on that. However, he says, the FISA court's rigorous rigor in protecting the rights of Americans, which is reinforced by 90-day renewals of surveillance orders, is necessarily dependent on the government's production to the court of all material and relevant facts. This should include information potentially favorable to the target of the FISA application that is known by the government. In other words, what he's saying is, is that when the government makes a case to spy on an American citizen especially, that if there's any positive evidence that might exonerate that person and say, well, there's really nothing going on here, the government is supposed to present the positive evidence and, in theory, defer to playing it safe rather than ending up being sorry later and abusing someone's legal or civil rights. Okay? Now, in the case of Carter Page, the government had at least four independent opportunities before the FISA court to accurately provide an accounting of the relevant facts. However, our findings, meaning the committee's findings, the committee that uh, Nunes heads up, indicates that described below, material and relevant information was omitted. And this, according to Nunes, is why he wrote this memo. He's saying that despite the fact that there were several opportunities here to bring in evidence that would have changed the game, instead, because of bias allegedly uh, uh, exhibited by these various parties who signed off on requesting the FISA warrants, there was uh, evidence uh, indicating that this should not have happened, and this is why he uh, has written this memo. And he numbers the different points of evidence. And let's start with point number one here. According to Nunes, the dossier compiled by Christopher Steele, the Steele dossier as it's known, on behalf of the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign, formed an essential part of the Carter Page FISA application. Steele was a longtime FBI source who was paid over $160,000 by the Democratic National Committee and Clinton campaign via the law firm of Perkins Coya a research and research firm Fusion GPS to obtain derogatory information on Donald Trump's ties to Russia. Then he goes on to note in point A, neither the initial application in October 2016 nor any of the renewals disclose or reference the role of the Democratic National Committee, the Clinton campaign, or any party campaign in funding Steele's efforts, even though the political origins of the Steele dossier were then known to senior DOJ and FBI officials. Now, folks, if that is true, and Nunes is telling the truth instead of putting some hype in there, that's major stuff. Again, look at the point here. These people, the head of law enforcement, the best that the U.S. supposedly has, they run these departments, they go before a judge and say, look, we need to spy on this guy because of this dossier that we've obtained about Donald Trump and what he supposedly did in Russia, down to the point where it even talks about some very perverse sexual behavior by Donald Trump. We have no idea if that stuff is true. There's no evidence it is true. It's just a claim without any facts to support it. But it gets down to that level. They go to the judge and say, we've got this data here. We've got this intelligence. And it comes from an FBI informant, a former uh, British intelligence officer who worked the Russian desk. But what they don't tell you is that the people who funded this document were from the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee. Now, that is a key material omission that if this really happened, these officials should be punished and forced to resign because you're not supposed to do that. Obviously, there's an inherent conflict of interest, especially when you add the fact that these people <laughs> certainly didn't want Donald Trump to win the election. They were obviously pro-Hillary. So Nunes has brought up a very interesting point here, which, if it's true, 
He's right, and the American people need to know. And who can blame Donald Trump for being mad and livid over this? Now, I'll tell you, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, meaning I did not support him for president. I did not vote for him. I'll tell you also that I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton either. And you might say, well, who did you vote for? Well, first of all, let's be clear. Um, I have lived outside the United States for 18 years, almost 18 years. And, of course, when the election took place, I was in India. And my single vote, one way or another, even if I would voted for Mickey Mouse, wouldn't count and doesn't count in an electoral system. When I'm in India, out of the United States for nearly two decades, and I don't even have state representation, I can't even vote for the mayor of a city, and I can't even vote in any state elections because I don't have a state. So rather than lower my standards and compromise my principles, because I don't support either party, I think both parties, the Republicans and Democrats, are wholly and only responsible for driving this country to implode itself, meaning I love America, it's my country, born and raised there, but let's be honest, it is in serious trouble. It is extremely polarized. The parties have failed the American people. The reason Trump got into office is because the alternative was Hillary Clinton, and Trump theoretically represents an outsider who's not beholden to big money. So knowing that my single vote doesn't matter in an electoral system, which is what the U.S. has, I decided to not vote at all in the election. It's not that I don't like voting. I do. I do believe in democracy. But in an electoral system, one vote doesn't matter. We'll be back after this commercial break. From our broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond, you're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Network. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, 
they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back to the third segment here on Cal's Corner Radio Show. My name is Cal Korf, and I'm your host. The executive producer of the show, once again, is Rob McConnell. So Nunes has brought up a very important point. Let's not mince words about it, that there was failure to disclose the connections between this dossier, that it was a paid hit job, basically, against Donald Trump by the Democratic Party and, of course, the Hillary campaign. And one would be reasonable to raise the question of, gee, did they have any biases, perhaps? Now, in point B of his memo, he says, the initial FISA application notes that Still was working for a named U.S. person but does not name Fusion GPS and Principal Glenn Simpson, who was paid by a U.S. law firm, Perkins Coy, representing the Democratic National Committee. Again, that's the Democratic Party. Even though it was known by the Department of Justice at the time that political actors were involved with the Steele dossier. The application, again, this is the request for a FISA warrant, does not mention Steele, was ultimately working on behalf of and paid by the DNC and the Clinton campaign, or that the FBI had separately authorized payment to steal for the same information. Now, that's rather interesting. The FBI also is paying steal for dirt on Donald Trump or his associates. Their concern is possible collusion with the Russians. So in point number two, he says the Carter Page FISA application also cited extensively a September 23, 2016 Yahoo News article by Michael Isakoff, which focuses on Page's July 2016 trip to Moscow. The article does not corroborate the Steele dossier because it is derived from information leaked by Steele himself to Yahoo News. The Page FISA application incorrectly assesses that Steele did not directly provide information to Yahoo News. Steele has admitted in British court filings that he met with Yahoo News and several other outlets in September 2016 at the direction of Fusion GPS. In other words, they Fusion GPS put him up to it. Perkins Coy was aware of Steele's initial media contacts because they hosted at least Um, one meeting in Washington, D.C. in 2016, which Steele and Fusion GPS, where this matter was discussed. Nunes goes on to say that Steele was suspended and then terminated, now that's important, folks, as an FBI source for what the FBI defines as the most serious of violations, an unauthorized disclosure to the media of his relationship with the FBI in an October 30th 2016 Mother Jones article, Mother Jones magazine, that was written by David Korn, still should have been terminated for his previous undisclosed contacts with Yahoo and other outlets in September before the page application was submitted to the FISA court in October, but still inappropriately concealed from and lied to the FBI about these contacts. Now, again, the FISA court was not told about any of this stuff, and had they been made aware of these facts, the judge may not have granted the warrant. It's common sense. It's basic logic 101. So it makes you wonder, Did what, were these omissions deliberate? Of course they were deliberate because nobody forced the FBI or DOJ or these other officials to withhold this information. Instead, they chose to do it. So it says here that Steele's numerous encounters with the media violated the cardinal rule of source handling, maintaining confidentiality, and demonstrated that Steele had become a less than reliable source for the FBI. Now, I want to add something about this point. Steele at first denied that he was the guy who had done this, 
Then he gave a interview in the British press where suddenly he's saying after he was identified and he couldn't deny it anymore that he now fears for his life that maybe Putin's uh, intelligence operatives in the FSB might kill him now because of what he did. Well, if he was so concerned about his safety, why was he talking to the media? Duh, hello, makes no sense. It's hypocrisy. And, of course, Steele is still alive, in good health, presumably. Putin hasn't touched him. Because if Putin did try to touch him, he wouldn't be around today. That's obvious. But the point is, it makes no sense for Steele to behave the way he did, where he's saying, I'm worried about my safety and security. I'm going to have to move now, like he cried to the British press. Yet, at the same time, he's talking to the media in the U.S. Again, you, you can't make this stuff up. It's a bizarre circus and... Anything around the Clinton campaign or the Clintons always tends to be a bizarre circus. So Nunes goes on to say that before and after Steele was terminated as a source, he maintained contact with DOJ via then Associate Directy Deputy Attorney General Bruce Orr, a senior DOJ official who worked closely with Deputy Attorneys General Yates and later Rosenstein, Shortly after the election, the FBI began interviewing or documenting his communications with Steele. For example, in September 2016, Steele admitted to Orr his feelings against then-candidate Trump when Steele said, quote, he was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president, unquote. This clear evidence of Steele's bias was recorded by Orr at the time and subsequently in official FBI files, but not reflected in any of the page FISA applications. So once again, Nunes' issue is, look, the source, Steele, was not only not credible, he was talking to the media, he was violating FBI protocols, they later terminated their relationship with him, after paying him, of course. And he's now said that he is desperate that Trump not get elected. So, gee, could maybe still have put some stuff in the dossier uh, from sources that were not credible, or maybe he interjected some stuff by himself trying to make Trump look bad because he doesn't want him to get elected. He's, quote, desperate, unquote, that Trump not get elected. Again, these are things that were not mentioned before the judge, which would have caused any reasonable judge to say, hmm, I'm not sure I'm going to grant this, or I really need to take a deeper look at this. Again, all this stuff was omitted deliberately by the people, including James Comey, who uh, went ahead and applied and signed for the warrant request from the judge. And then Nunes goes on to say, during the same time period, Orr's wife was employed by Fusion GPS. Gee, could that be a conflict of interest, folks? It automatically is by that dynamic. Again, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, Orr's wife, who has to dabble in this and talk to uh, still his wife is working for the company that is paying her salary now <laughs> again you can't make this stuff up so Orr's wife was employed by fusion gps to assist in the cultivation of opposition research on trump see that's what they call it instead of a hatchet job or a hit job they call it opposition research that's just politically correct english for what's basically a paid hit piece Again, he says that Orr later provided the FBI with all of his wife's opposition research paid for by the Democratic National Committee in the Clinton campaign via Fusion GPS. And you can simply Google this, folks. Uh, Google the phrase Fusion GPS hit piece and add the word environmentalist there. And you will see that in the past, Fusion GPS has been paid to smear people. I'm not making this up. You can look it up on the Internet. It is a matter of public record. So why would the Clinton campaign or the Democrats, if they really care about the truth, make a point to hire a company that in the past has been paid to smear people? Again, smearing people doesn't mean you're telling the truth about them. Look up the word smear. It speaks for itself. So the Orr's relationship with Steele and Fusion GPS was also concealed from the FISA court, and Nunes is right to raise this red flag. Any reasonable person would do the same thing. And then Nunes makes point number four. 
according to the head of the FBI's counterintelligence division, Assistant Director Bill Priestap, corroborated uh, corroboration of the Steele dossier was in its infancy at the time of the initial Page FISA application. Now that's important, and here's why. There have been many allegations raised in the Steele dossier against Trump, the entire contents of which, by the way, were published by BuzzFeed magazine late last year. And when it first came out, nobody knew whether all of the claims in that dossier were true or not. It turns out that many of them are false. Enough time has gone by to investigate them. For example, there's an alleged trip to Prague. We now know that the individual who's accused of going to Prague, theoretically for nefarious activities, he never went to Prague. He even produced his passport and proved that he hadn't left the country. (laughs) So the information is wrong, but that was not known at the time and, of course, was not presented to the judge. So according – after Steele was terminated as a source uh, by the FBI – uh, Still's reporting was only minimally corroborated. That was also withheld from the judge. Yet in early January 2017, Director Comey briefed President-elect Trump on a summary of the Steele dossier, even though it was, according to his June 2017 testimony, salacious and unverified, quote-unquote. While the FISA application relied on Steele's past record of credible reporting and other unrelated matters, it ignored or concealed his anti-Trump financial and ideological motivations. Furthermore, Deputy Director McCabe testified before the committee in December 2017 that no surveillance warrant would have been sought from the FISA court without the Steele dossier information. Now that, again, is the key point here, and we'll come back and explain why after our commercial break. One of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce, is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201 934-8986 934-8986 or Skype at Elizabeth.Joyce And for more information you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, 
finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From Out of the Woodwork will take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. Welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Cal's Corner Radio Show here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. My name is Cal Korf and I'm your host. Once again, the executive producer of the show is Rob McConnell. Well, as I always say, almost in every episode of this uh, broadcast, time goes by so fast. Boy, it did again here. Uh, we're almost done here with the uh, discussing the Nunes memo and the Steele dossier. So before the break, we talked about the fact that according to Nunes – uh, there would never have been a warrant granted to spy on Carter Page if the Steele dossier info was not included. Now, what does that tell you, folks? It basically tells you that the case against Trump, where it concerns this alleged collusion in Carter Page, is practically non-existent. If the Steele dossier, which has credibility problems, which also has problems regarding its origin, being it, it was a paid hit piece by the Democrats in the Clinton campaign, if that was removed from the FISA request, there would never have been a request submitted that tells you that the whole thing is just a bunch of hooey. Now, I predict, and I've said this since last year, that by the time Mueller finishes his probe, that there will be no smoking gun evidence that Putin called Trump and they talked and they agreed to collude and they have this buddy thing going on, uh, unrequited love, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's there. And the reason I don't think it's there is because Trump has been spied on by various governments for decades. Anybody who is rich and is doing business overseas, especially with the former uh, area that was once the Soviet Union, they're going to be spied on by foreign intelligence, by American intelligence and our allies. The evidence would have come in by now. And we have to remember that while Trump haters will say, well, look at Paul Manafort. He's been indicted for money laundering. Yes, he has been. But that stuff occurred years before he was involved in the Trump campaign. Therefore, it is not relevant to that issue. But you can't tell Trump haters that. And again, I'm not a supporter of Donald Trump. I've said from day one, I don't think he has a temperament to be president and he's not qualified. But he is president. I did predict he would win. I was one of the few journalists who predicted he was win would win because I never swallowed the Clinton Kool-Aid or Kook-Aid as I call it. And I could sense and listen to the mood of the American people, my friends in America, most of whom I'm still in touch with. And I could clearly sense that they wanted Trump, not because they love him, but because they didn't want Hillary even more so. And in our electoral system, for better or for worse, although Hillary won the popular vote only because of the disproportionately large numbers of people living in New York and California, Trump essentially won the heart of America uh, and was able to flip states that were typically um, – in the win column for the Democrats. And nobody had done that in a long time in politics, especially on the Republican side. Yet Trump did it, and uh, he earned his win, and he deserved to win based on the way the system is, for better or for worse. So getting back to the Nunes memo, again, he says that without the Steele dossier information, a FISA application for warrant would never have even taken place. That is critical, folks. Then he says the Page FISA application also mentions information regarding fellow Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos, but there is no evidence that any cooperation or conspiracy between Page and Papadopoulos ever occurred. The Papadopoulos information triggered the opening of an FBI counterintelligence investigation in late 2000, uh, July 2016 by FBI agent Peter Sturzak. Sturzak was reassigned by the special counsel's office, now that would be Robert Mueller, to FBI Human Resources for improper text messages with his mistress, FBI attorney Lisa Page, no known relation to Carter Page, where they both demonstrated a clear bias against Trump and in favor of Clinton, whom Sturzak had also investigated. The Sturzak-Lisa Page texts 
also reflect extensive discussions about the investigation, orchestrating leaks to the media, which is illegal, by the way, and include a meeting with Deputy Director McCabe to discuss an insurance policy against President Trump's election. Now, you can easily Google what happened with uh, Sturzak. He's been demoted, although not officially. He's just been transferred to human resources. He will probably leave the FBI in the near future. He, of course, was having an affair with an FBI lawyer. Their text messages have now been public or made public, at least some of them, where they talk about their fears that Donald Trump, uh, you know, get elected as president. Now, real quickly, let's cover the reactions by the media, especially Trump haters and the Democrats, they've, th- these reactions have largely been predictable. CNN has griped that Trump gave the memo, uh, the Nunes memo, when it was released by the White House to Fox Network first. Well, boo-hoo, CNN. Do you expect uh, Trump to give you the memo first? Are, are your, uh, is your ego so big that you have to have it first? I mean, let's be honest. CNN hates Trump. If I were Trump, I wouldn't give CNN anything. I wouldn't give MSNBC anything either if I knew they hated me. Now, admittedly, Fox is pro-Trump. Of course he's going to give it to them. It's been done before. So CNN's complaint is, we didn't get it first, Fox did. Well, boo-hoo. It's ridiculous for them to even go there. But that's what they did. And then, of course, you have reactions uh, uh, by Fox to the memo. They, of course, uh, support what Trump says. And then, of course, you have House Minority Leader Democrat Nancy Pelosi. She's, of course, a drama queen. She attracted Trump in her typical drama queen fashion by saying, quote, he, Trump, has abdicated his responsibilities as commander in chief to protect American people by protecting our intelligence sources and the rest. If the president uses this fake, horrible release of distorted intelligence, she means the Nunes memo, as an excuse to fire Rosenstein or Miller, it could lead to a constitutional crisis. Now, for once, Nancy Pelosi didn't call Trump President Bush. She constantly does that. But Nancy Pelosi is lying when she says that there were any uh, national security issues compromised because all of the information in the Nunes memo has been public domain. The Steele dossier was published again, and Pelosi knows this, unless she's forgotten, that uh, it was published by BuzzFeed Magazine late last year. Okay? It's been out there for over a year, and yet the Nunes memo recounts some of that info. There's not a single thing in it that was classified. In fact, it, it, it's amazing the whole memo was even classified to begin with, since it didn't contain any secrets. On the other hand, the memo the Democrats said they prepared does cite classified info, especially source information, and if it does get released, it will probably have to be redacted to protect that information. So Nancy Pelosi's reaction to the release of the Nunes memo is pure nonsense, but I expect that out of Pelosi. She's Nancy Pelosi. Now, Democrat Dick Durbin claimed in a tweet that using the Nunes memo as a pretext to fire Rod Rosenstein, Robert Mueller, or any other DOJ leadership would clearly be an attempt to obstruct justice in the Russian investigation. Now, Durbin is right if Trump does do this. However, the White House insists that this is not going to happen. But Trump haters, they don't believe this. Also, it depends on why you fire somebody. If you have bad intentions, then of course it's wrong. But if your intentions are legal and noble and from the right place, there's nothing wrong with it. If a person deserves to be fired, you need to fire them, okay? So the bottom line in all this is for those who are upset, especially the la-la left-wing liberal media, that the Nunes memo has been released – The opponents of its release or its existence or whatever you want to call it, they need to put up or shut up, okay? And the reason – the the way you do that is cut to the chase, call everybody's hand or bluff, whatever you want to call it, is you release the other memo that the Democrats have uh, written. And then once both of them are out, assuming that enough of the Democrats' memo is not redacted, you can go through – point by point, and see who's telling the truth. In fact, the Democrats have said 
Eric Swalwell, who's a Democratic congressman who claims to have seen the Democratic memo. He says, quote, our memo rebuts point by point what the Republicans have said, unquote. He also notes that unlike Nunes's memo, the Republican or the Democratic memo uses footnotes. Footnotes are always a good thing. So if the Democrats have a memo that refutes point by point, as Swalwell says, they need to release that memo so that the American people can make an informed decision on this subject. Now, if what the Democrats claim is true, and one never knows with either party since both of them lie much too often nowadays, they should either put up or shut up. If it's legally possible, they should release their so-called smoking gun memo so that the global public and especially the American people can know the truth about this issue. For there is no question that FISA abuses have occurred during the Obama administration. The House Intelligence Committee on FISA abuses can easily be read on the Internet. You can Google it. And in response to the abuses, Obama ordered corrections to be put in place. Now, Special Prosecutor Miller has even removed or transferred personnel he once had on his team, whom he had originally handpicked to help him investigate Trump. Peter Sturzak is just one example. He is specifically cited in the Nunes memo. Sturzak was once a senior, extremely powerful FBI figure. He used to be chief of the counter-espionage section. He's now disgraced himself by cheating on his wife and having an extramarital affair with a female lawyer from the FBI. The SMS texts are available in the public. Okay? So uh, the bottom line is that the Democrats have been promising to release their memo. They need to do that. And to be clear, for the good of the American people and their interests, the best way to learn the truth is to release the memo. If there were indeed FISA abuses, the only way to stop them is to expose them. That's obvious. The rules of law must never be held hostage to politics, which is a simple universal principle that both the Democrats and the Republicans on various issues still stubbornly and wrongly refuse to adhere to. For whenever real justice is politicized, it is instead tyranny. Now, my name is Cal Kor. I'm the host of Cal's Corner Radio here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Please join us again next week. Thank you. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. 
He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.